Hi guys, today I'm going to talk about the difference between projects, programs and portfolios. If you like this video, do press subscribe and if you press the bell, you'll be notified next time I put out a project management themed video. So this is a topic that students quite often find quite hard because it's a bit blurred between each one. I'll link above to my definition of a project. It's a unique transient endeavour bringing together people to get a defined goal in a defined length of time. It's one thing, it usually has one project manager, it's got quite a defined sort of goal that you really can kind of grasp if it's been run well. Whereas a programme is a set of projects all together with a similar goal. I personally see projects like the aircraft carrier as a programme because there's lots of different projects in there all going towards the final goal of commissioning an aircraft carrier. Same with the train line, it could be seen as, so I'm thinking of HS2, the line that at the moment is from London to Birmingham, it could be seen as a programme. It's loads and loads of projects but the end goal is to have a train line going across the country. A programme needs a programme manager to ensure that these projects within their programme don't conflict because quite often because there's quite a lot of projects there'll be a bit of confliction there and they won't all have the same goal within the programme even though the whole programme has a sort of more strategic goal. Each project will have its own sort of functional goal within that strategic goal and um, they may not all align exactly. Then we have portfolios. Now portfolios are, it's more like a company of projects. They should all have the same strategic direction, but it's a proper high level strategy of let's earn some money, let's gain uh, market share in the shipbuilding market, things like that. And within a portfolio, you have lots of projects and programs. Projects don't have to be within a program, so you may have programs and then the odd individual project which is more standalone. So for example, you look at a project-based organisation like BA Systems, they have a portfolio of projects and programs. Their programs are all big aerospace things to show their mark on the aerospace world and show that BAE have all that knowledge that they have. They also have projects, smaller projects, maybe um, to do with their military vehicles and munitions, which aren't really part of a programme and more standalone. Those are also within their portfolio. Lastly, you have other projects like IT upgrades, maybe changing the software that's used behind the scenes. Again, those projects may be part of actually a slightly different uh, programme of you know, business improvement that you don't traditionally think of going with the other programs but actually when you look at the portfolio as a whole they're a useful part of it to make sure the company's strategic goals are met. So where this gets complicated is somewhere going back to the example of the HS2 train line. Actually it could be argued that it's more of a portfolio or even a full business. It is a business, um, a, f a separate entity was created in order to carry out the, the project, although it's not really a project because it's, it's quite a bit bigger. There is lots of programs in there, but then you're building the stations, you're building the train lines, you're building the trains. There's also community projects going on in order to widen the sort of the impact it will have. The whole point of this project is to move people across the country for economic benefit. That's why the government are doing it. So as part of the project they're buying up houses, they're doing loads of social things. So actually calling it a programme, a single programme, is a bit smaller than it actually is. It isn't simply just building a train line. It's actually a portfolio of projects to bring that higher strategic level thing of growing the economy. They've also built a college just for all the apprentices and the people in training on HS2. You couldn't see that as part of the program of building a train line because that's not part of building a train line, that's more of the strategic end goal of growing the country. So I've made this sound really wishy-washy and I've made this sound more complicated than it necessarily is. Projects, really easy to define programs they have quite a tangible goal so it won't be a high level wishy-washy strategic thing it may be business improvement it may be building a capability to do a thing so it's a slightly bigger goal than you could have on a project and it has loads of projects within it lastly you have portfolios and portfolios have a much wider strategic goal that's much less tangible 
and you've got this longer term aim. Analyzing these sort of things, I always like to think of the iron triangle or the iron star, depending on what you want to call it, cost, quality, time, risk, and people. So when you look at the costs, generally, portfolios have big costs associated with them. They'll also have multiple income streams from different projects, maybe from a company sort of externally funding their portfolio, various different customers. A portfolio is complicated. A program, again, may only have one income stream. So the aircraft carriers, the Ministry of Defence, they paid for it. Whereas um, other programs may have a few different income streams, but generally it's one income stream. Lastly, projects generally have one income stream, or if you have donors, if it's a charitable project, then you may have multiple ones, but it's more sort of, it's kind of kept in one pot, basically. Then we have quality. Now, quality on projects is all about looking at your outputs and making sure you've got quality outputs that are to the standards you agreed at the beginning. It's quite simple, um, I'll do a video on quality. Programs, their quality is a little bit less sort of black and white. It's more about quality processes, making sure that within that program, lots of good stuff is happening. It's making sure that the end goal is being kept. Remember, within those projects, they'll be doing that qu project quality, but the program quality, that next level up that program managers will be looking at, is more about the interactions between the different projects and the processes and the economies, making sure that if three projects are doing the same thing, that they don't all just do the same thing separately. Time. So a project has a defined time period. Really, a program should have a defined time period, but they have lots of projects all sort of starting at different points, ending at different points, and also it's often a lot harder to measure that time period at the beginning and work out how long it will take. Although, again, I'm, I know I'm using the aircraft carrier a lot. They did have an idea of when that was going to end. It may have been six years before it actually did end, but, yeah, you know. Then portfolios. Portfolios, actually, it's quite hard to see the difference between these and business as usual. I personally would make the argument that portfolios are basically a bit an organisation doing business as usual, but that's an argument for another time. Now it brings us on to risk. You have projects, you have risks. Project has risks, you don't know everything about it. It's all fine, project manager ran manages the risks. At that level, it's all about mitigating the risks and making sure that they don't happen or that you've mitigated them, basically. At a program level, you've got all these project managers dealing with their risks. As a program manager, you have to look across the program and make sure you balance the risks. So this is a slightly different skill set. You've got to make sure that, yes, you can totally have some risky projects, but you've got to balance them out with some less risky projects. So those project managers within those projects, the, even the risky ones and the non-risky ones, they, they're battling with their risks, but you actually, if you've got a risky project, you can be quite chill about it because you know you've got some good income streams elsewhere within your programme. And this is the same with the portfolio. Again, you're balancing it all out. It's all about making sure that the larger numbers are all kind of averaging. So then you have people. Now, project management is about people. It's about your team members, the customer, and whatever your internal sort of stakeholders are, your project sponsor or your program manager, portfolio manager. Those are the main stakeholders. It's about getting stuff done and getting people to get stuff done. When you move up to program level, you start having to deal upwards a lot more. You have your project managers dealing downwards and you have to manage them and make sure they're good. But actually a lot of what you're doing is upwards and outwards and making sure that the program is being perceived well by the outside world making sure that the people upstairs are kind of carrying on giving you funding, all those sort of things. And then you get to portfolio level, and at this level it can be very political. Or you may have to get, deal with government ministers, you may have to deal with people in different countries. It could be such a wider thing, and it's much more strategic and long term. You may have to sacrifice some projects because they're annoying some stakeholders in order to help other projects. It all becomes... It's just a very different skill to project management. And let me know below, do you work on project programmes or portfolios? Do you agree with my definitions or disagree with them? I'm not going to lie, I haven't really worked as a programme or portfolio manager, so this is just what I see as a lowly project manager. Like my video if you like it, comment below if you have any comments, press subscribe if you want to see more, and press the bell if you want to be notified. Thanks for watching, goodbye!